Hey, what's up? My name is Robin Stoll and I'm taking you with me to Perucaville 2018. Let's go! We're busy in the studio too. I know, but I still do Kung Fu. Okay, cool. No excuses. <laughs> Welcome. Hi Luke, um, today I would like to talk to you about young and upcoming artists. What is your suggestion for a DJ beginner? How should someone start? So I had this question on Twitter this week. Someone asked me, okay, so how long was it from when you started making music up until you could live mm -hmm. from music? And no one really knows that. So um, I started in 1992 with producing. Then three years later, I landed my first record deal. Uh, did my first paid DJ show five years later and then it was another three years after that before I could uh, make like be a, be a professional so in total seven years and if you're looking right now and you're like oh but I wanna you know I started three months ago I have a DJ controller I wanna <laughs> play Perucaville festival right now it's amazing keep in mind that it'll take you at least five seven years I immediately focused on original tracks from the first time um, as we know each other for quite a while um, I remember that you recommended to start with edits or mashups at the beginning um, could you explain why um, it's it's a fun way of starting to produce just like by playing with music and then you can always say you know oh I made this edit or mashup or bootleg not remix. not remix yeah unofficial remix but a mashup or an edit, and it's just a simple way of getting to know your music program. If you want to start with, okay, so I just downloaded Ableton, <laughs> and I, I want to make a track now. Okay, so maybe I should program a kick drum, and what synth do I use, and how do I play melodies, and then, oh, but now I have a loop, but how do I arrange it? And there's so many things. And this you can discover by just starting simple, and playing with it, and then, piece by piece getting yeah. to, to learn you know a little bit of compression a little bit of reverb and and yeah so that's why the next okay. question is about reaching a specific level as a DJ and producer for example signing your first contracts uh, with your tracks or getting some booking inquiries um, how did you manage it and did someone help you organizing it at this time uh, no not really so I often say in my vlogs it's important to have a manager but the manager comes last, uh, like whenever you have a little bit of success, that's when the manager comes. So for me, my first success was, was with releasing records first, releasing mm -hmm. tracks. I made a remix for Green Velvet, The Stalker, yeah. uh, back in 1997 and Carl Cox started playing this. And because everyone was paying attention to Carl Cox, all of a sudden people started to get to know me. And I did an interview with a magazine the end of 1996 and I said well I'm a producer but I DJ too and they were like wow this is amazing yeah. let's book you so they booked me and then an English booking agent get, found out that I was a DJ because my name was already out there yeah you know they, they could book me for a for little fee and from there on it actually I had more success in other countries but not in, in the Netherlands yet. In the Netherlands, they were like, ah, we don't care about Luke. <laughs> Until Awakening started booking me in 1999. Mm -hmm. And then I got really successful in the Netherlands. Okay. But then it took me again another 
five to seven years for me to become successful outside of the Netherlands. Okay. So it's a, it's a long road, and, and so obviously I taught him a lot, and I am super strict on him. But then you can see where I get it from. It's not something that will happen. Like, there's only one guy, you know, there's only one Martin Garrix, and he won the lottery. And none of us in reality can win the lottery. So we just gotta put in the hard work and, and just go for it for years. You always give an advice to young producers, for me as well, um, creating a future version of the recent sounds. Um, do you have any tips how to get this kind of sound? So this is a, a, a quick hack on how to really use your imagination. Because yes, we all can make bass house. Yes, we can all, all make future bass. Yes we, yes, we can all make trap beats. This is not interesting because everything like that, say I would make a new phone right now, <laughs> a new phone and I would come out with the, the iPhone X, exactly the same, or the, the Samsung S9, exactly the same, would you buy it? No, you would buy my iPhone X3 or you would buy my Samsung 15, right? So that's why I say make the future version because otherwise it's not interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So, my last question, Luke. Um, who are the upcoming artists within the next one or two years? What do you think? Uh, well, obviously, we have our own mixed mash talents right now. Uh, uh, Timon is doing an amazing job. We have Process doing an incredible job. But outside of our mixed mash family, I uh, am keeping an eye on a kid named Domestic. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Bale is one of them. Okay. I will be promoting the Twisted House sound from here on, and it's the breakdown of the house sound. It's the move to the sound, move to the move to the sound type of sound. Yeah. The bleepy, the housey. This is what I'm going to promote. That's going to be the next future house, and, and these type of people will promote that as well. Okay, cool. Luke, thanks for your time. That's it, and I hope I will get a release on your label soon. <laughs> I hope so too. Okay. Peace. Yesterday I had an amazing time, I joined Laidback Luke on his Mixmash record stage and he supported my track Abu. Luke, thanks for having me, it was incredible, such a good feeling. Now it's day two of Perukable 2018. <laughs> I'm here with DOD. So, Dan, thanks for your time. No problem. Um, you are a recent example of someone who is having his own unique sound while producing stuff you like most. Yep. So my first question is, um, when did you have the idea of creating your future Jack sound? Uh, it kind of just happened naturally, to be honest. I was uh, making a lot of music and the all side kind of had the own similar kind of sounds in them, you know, like I was using similar kind of drums and yeah, the sound just naturally developed and I think that's why it became so successful for me is just because it developed naturally and I wasn't trying to push it, you know. Okay. So yeah. How long did it take until you received your first release with this kind of sound? Um, I mean, pretty much instantly because um, I would, you know, when I make a track, it takes probably between three and six months to come out. So yeah. that happened pretty quickly um, with all different tracks. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just labels always want to snap up the music. <laughs> you know, man. Yeah, of course. What are your future plans considering the Future Jack sound? Okay, so I've been making a lot of vocal stuff recently. Okay. Going to be releasing a lot on Axstone, obviously. Uh, yeah, just doing some big collaborations as well. So I can't say too much, but yeah. <laughs> Stuff's popping off, mate. Stuff's popping off. So you're just aiming on X Tone or um, some no, other labels I mean, as well? I release on all different labels. I'm not tied down to any specific label. Okay. But you know, I think, um, I think that's that's what's also played a part in like things going well because 
release it on different labels, you're able to tap into their yeah. own fan base. Mm -hmm. So you reach a wider audience. So, um, already the last question um, is about laid back look. Okay. Uh, today you are going to play on a stage yep. as well as return to your roots. Yes. Um, so the question is, uh, how did the booking happen and what kind of relationship do you share with Luke after you discovered you and after you have made your first steps within the label? Yeah, I mean, I've, uh, I, I owe Luke so much, you know, with my career. He's there right from the start, gave me so much guidance. Obviously, signed my tracks in the early stages. Yeah. I know. Um, toured with him, you know, really, really, obviously, just a great guy, you know, he does a lot of uh, aspiring producers. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, this booking came came about, um, yeah, I'm not too sure, I just got the booking for him, man. Yeah, yeah, but okay. it, 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 was, it was nice to, to get a booking like this come through, um, obviously, because I still love all the Mix Mash guys. Yeah. And, you know, we've, uh, we've got history with each other, man. It's good, I know. it's good. So it, feels, sure. it feels good to come back and play for these guys. And I'm excited to play here at Perucaville on the Mix Mass stage. Day three of Perucaville has already started. Yesterday I was able to catch David Guetta, Fede Le Grand and Dubs. We had an amazing time and I hope this day is going to be amazing as well. Let's go. I'm right here with Tom from Blaster Jacks Perucaville 2018. Hi Tom, it's nice to meet you. Hi, likewise. Thank you for having me. Hi. Many young artists can't imagine how hard life is while touring all over the world. Um, do you have any tips how to survive a tour? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the thing is like when you're a young artist and when you're looking up to the bigger artists, you cannot imagine, you can never prepare yourself for what's coming and how the life is like. Because there is no way of testing that. You, yeah. you have to find out yourself and that's the only way and some of them are better in it than others. Yeah. Um, any tips for them? Well, you know what it is, I can give a lot of tips. And uh, I mean, like, if you would ask me the question, what would you do different for yourself? I wouldn't do anything different, even though I've made a lot of mistakes, but in the end, it brings you where you are. And I think for a lot of new artists, uh, in the beginning, everything is great. Like, the, it's having that rockstar life out of nothing, and you should absolutely enjoy it. And I mean, like, it comes with all the drinks, it comes with yeah. the, the women, it comes with all the craziness and madness, and. I, right now, I would say like you can resist yourself on that, but on the other hand, you live only once, and yeah. like I mean, <laughs> I think it's good to have that that life too. I mean, to have that few years, you know. Okay. Uh, but it's it's tough. I mean, like doing a lot of after parties, doing a lot of partying, and, and drinking everywhere you can because all the booze is free, all the drinks are free. Yeah. Everybody wants something of you. It's very easy to get like um, uh, to get into that kind of vibe, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, right now I know this after a few years, like your body is like resisting and it's like, fuck that, you know, it's, it's, it's not the way how you should treat your body and yourself. So yeah. right now I'm finding a balance for that. I'm barely drinking, trying to be more, uh, more consistent with my diet and everything. Okay. But yeah, for young artists, I mean, I can give them all those tips, but in the end, you have to find out yourself. Yeah. You have to also live. So I think by making mistakes, you know, it's a good way to okay. get into the life. <laughs> that's that's yeah. cool, man. Okay. Um, so, what are your next uh, production plans and goals in your career? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, right now, I cannot say too much about that because we're working on something, uh, something really cool. Okay. Uh, about uh, production stuff, we just released our new track, "Big Room Never Dies," together with Hot Will. Yeah. yeah. Came out last Friday. Um, any other goals? Well, who knows? Who knows? I cannot say too much because I'm, I know I'm, I'm revealing too much right now. <laughs> but, but we got something, uh, something cool coming up. Yeah. My last question is about your label, Maximize Records. Yeah. Um, for other producers out there, um, I would like to know if you have a favor of a specific sound for your label or doesn't it matter? Uh, actually, it doesn't really matter because I think like if you take, uh, take a look at the whole catalog, all those tracks have like a different kind of vibe. But what's really important for us, it has like a story to tell. So okay. it's something unique. It doesn't. I don't want it to be to, to sound like any other. To track. Everyone else. Yeah. So yeah. It's, if it's like a remake of another track or something that looks or sounds very very alike. 
we don't really like it. But if, even if it's a crazy or strange track and it wouldn't fit anywhere else, yeah. it could still fit on our label because it has like its own story. And I think that's really important that for us, like I always see it like this, imagine yourself, you have like a compilation album every year of all your maximized tracks, like then it's it's very diverse, even though it's a lot of stuff in big room or yeah. sometimes real bass house, stuff like that. But I think um, the track just needs to tell a story and yeah. nowadays a lot of producers are just copying other tracks, which is good that's, that's to learn of it, but yeah. it's, uh, I think it's more important to create your own sound and just to to give it whatever you feel like you should put in, you know, even though it's like some weird samples or weird loops or whatever, it doesn't matter, but in the end it's like something really crazy, something really unique, mm -hmm. and we love it. Okay, so I think the message for all the upcoming producers out here is um, make sure if you send it to the label, it's amazing, it's maybe it's something different, and then maybe you have the golden ticket. Yeah, maybe, who knows? Okay, Tom, thanks for your time, and he's about to go on in a few minutes here at Pabrukoville 2018. I wish you good luck, man. All right, thanks so much, man. Thank right. you. It's already the last day of Perukaville and yesterday I had an amazing time with Zed on the main stage. Yeah.